Well everyone, Apple just released iPadOS 26 Developer Beta 6 to test out, to try out, and see if they were able to squash any bugs, give us any new features or any improvements. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's find out what Apple gave us for Beta 6. Let's get into it. But now, if you do enjoy videos like this one where we keep you up to date on all things public beta and developer beta when it comes to iOS and iPadOS, consider subscribing to the channel. But now, let's talk about iPadOS 26 Beta 6. Well everyone, let's hop right into this. And like I mentioned, we are on iPadOS 26 Beta 6 and I'm using my M4 iPad Pro, the 13 inch variant. So you guys get an idea of what the build size and build number are. So if we go into our photos, you can see that it's about 10 gigabytes of space that needs to be taken up. So give yourself at least 20 gigs of open storage in order to get this installed and installed correctly. And leave some comments down below of how big the update size was for you guys. So I'm always curious to know what the differences are depending on what piece of hardware you have. And then in terms of build number, if we go into our settings, let's full screen this because of course now we can, but we'll go to our general, go to our about, go to our iPadOS version, and we are on 23A5318 lowercase c, meaning that we're probably on a weekly schedule moving forward with iPadOS 26 until we get the RC edition. And then and I believe September 9th to September 12th is when we should be expecting the public release of iPadOS 26 to all supported iPads, which is going to be a lot of iPads. So definitely check out if your iPad will be supported by iPadOS 26. You might be surprised that your older iPad will have that support. But now in terms of what's new, I'm going to overlay some footage. I wasn't able to actually just screen record this or anything, but the first thing that you're going to notice when you open up iPadOS 26 beta 6 is going to be a new kind of walkthrough splash screen video which kind of lets you know exactly what you're getting yourself into when it comes to this new beta update. For example, it goes through the new windowing system briefly, it goes through the new liquid glass design briefly, your new dock briefly, and just gives you an idea of what you're about to get yourself into. So if you are somebody who's getting the public version for the first time, you're not dealing with any of the betas, the public or the developer beta, and all the new windowing stuff is gonna be just brand new to you in September, this is just giving some people the idea of, hey, this is what it's gonna look like. This is kind of the new navigation style of the new windowing system for iPadOS. So definitely get used to it. And I'm glad that they did that to, again, bring people some context as to what exactly is gonna happen with their new iPad. And then in terms of what's actually new, the one thing that we did notice is if we go into our settings and if you go down to sound, Apple did give us some new ringtones early on in this beta update, but if we go into sound and go into this reflection standpoint and go to default, you can see that we got a bunch of new ones. So we have the default one, we have the buoyant one, dreamer, pond, pop, reflected, surge. These are all brand new ringtones that were added to both iPadOS and iOS. So if we click on one of them, so if we click on them, you can hear them, they're kind of nice. They're different, but they still kind of have that essence of that original one, which is this default one. So they're sort of all a different instance of each other, just kind of with different formats and different overlays. But at the end of the day, you know, new ringtones are always an added welcome bonus whenever you're talking about a new beta update. And then the other thing that you notice right away is just how much quicker apps are opening. So if I open these apps up, they're opening up extremely quickly. And there's kind of a new animation that's almost kind of like a genie in a bottle situation that's happening, which I think is really cool. So it kind of like slides out depending on if you're going with a big size or if you're going into windowed mode. So if I make this smaller and then let's say if I minimize it, and then open it again, it'll come out in this kind of genie style format, which is kind of coming out and it's all relative to where it is on the screen. So if I pop it up from this side, it'll come in from this side versus if I pop it in from the left side, it's gonna open up from the left side if it's a brand new application. So a new animation style is cool. And then like I said, it just works a lot faster than it did before. And this is the first time I haven't had to like reset my iPad every single time I get a new update because it is just working very, very quick out the box. The next change that happened is in your messages application, when you first open up beta six, this unknown sender section, which was added in iPadOS 26 and iOS 26 will not be there. So this unknown sender section filters everything based on, again, people that are unaware, or maybe you're not supposed to be getting those messages or it's spam or some sort of advertisement and all goes here. And what Apple did is they actually removed that as by default. And if you go into your settings and go into your messages, you have a new toggle and section over here for unknown senders. So screen unknown senders is now a toggle, so you can toggle it off. If I go back into my messages application, you can then go in here and see that that unknown sender section is gone and it's gonna go into the manage filtering. Same thing with the recent deleted spam and messages. So if I go back there, I can actually toggle back on, it'll come back. And then also you can then allow for notifications because by default before, if something went into your unknown sender section, you would not get a notification because again, it's an unknown sender. You get that little badge that you know, 
hey, you have a few messages in this unknown sender's category, but you would not get a notification. You can now toggle that on if you would like to. And then also you can even toggle off and on the filter spam section and then that'll get removed as well. So some new updates to the messages app, always a welcome addition to be able to filter everything a lot easier. And then like I mentioned, performance wise, everything is just a lot snappier. Everything seems to be moving. Everything seems to have a place. It looks like Apple went even further back into their liquidy glass situation. Does this still stretch out? Yes, it does. So for the most part, everything has stayed the same. We got a couple new things, but let's look at the actual battery life perspective and how we did with beta five, especially. So if we go into view all battery usage, you can see that we're getting about three hours and 17 minutes of screen on time, but on a day like Thursday, four hours and 44 minutes of screen on time. So the battery life does vary depending on the day, depending on the task, but I haven't been worried about my battery life when I am using it and I use it for hours on end every single day. Of course, I plug it in when necessary, as you can see here, when I do charge it on day like Friday, we got four hours and 15 minutes on a 48% charge. So we easily could have gotten eight hours of some intensive work with LumaFusion, the Files app and Blackmagic taking up a lot of that battery life. And then just as I continue to say, things feel snappier, apps are opening up faster. It's early days with beta six, but leave a comment down below how you're feeling about beta six overall, what you've noticed, if anything different at all, because overall things just seem to be snappy. Everything seems to be there where it needs to. And then again, things are just resizing and moving super, super quickly, as well as all the apps opening very seamlessly. So all that is amazing. But that's all the changes that we saw with beta six. Again, these are all gonna be more bug improvements and bug fixes overall versus anything drastic that's changing. But let's finish up this video. So that will just about do for this update, everybody. As you saw, there wasn't a ton of new changes or differences. It'll, everything just kind of got a little tighter. Everything seems a lot smoother. We got some new animations, a bunch of new ringtones, which is great. But again, Apple just getting ready for this to come out to the entire public. And it shows with the very first update that I mentioned, which is this walkthrough of what this new windowing system and what iPad OS 26 is gonna be like, the task manager, the menu bar, all those good things that are coming to iPad OS 26. And Apple just didn't wanna surprise everybody with a whole new system without at least warning them in the welcome and intro screen. But let me know in the comment down below if you guys are updated. Are you on the developer beta, on the public beta? Or are you just gonna wait until the first week or second week of September to put it on your main iPad when the public version is out? Always curious to know how you guys are handling the beta program. But I, for one, am super excited for people to get their hands on it. And I'm very curious to see how their reaction and their sentiment towards an iPad is going to change with iPadOS 26 and how it's going to compare to their use cases on a regular macOS computer. Curious to know, but that'll do it. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin so I know you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this, check out one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.